Over the last few weeks, we have been working at transforming this closet into a coffee bar area. We've shared every little step of the process the last few weeks from demoing out the closet, coming up with a plan, shopping for materials like tile, cabinets, and countertop. We purchased the tile for this space from Floor and & Decor, and the cabinets were 12-inch unfinished cabinets from Home Depot. The plan was to create a built-in coffee bar space with two cabinets on either side of a mini fridge. So the first step was to do some flooring work, and then Jalen did the electrical work, adding two small can lights and plug-ins to the space. And once that was done, it was time to start tiling. So Jalen took this tile all the way up to the ceiling, and I will try to link this tile below, but if I can't, I will just type out the name of this tile. After the tile work was complete, we let that mortar dry overnight, and now the next morning he is adding grout, and then I'll be painting all the walls in Inside this used to be closet the same color as the other walls in the house and the wall color in our house is agreeable gray by Sherwin Williams next Jalen had to trim about three and a half inches off the backs of these cabinets so that they would fit in the space he did also trim the drawer brackets and we were able to still use the drawers even though the backs of the cabinets had been cut off and that is as far as we had gotten in the previous video so now we are at the present day and in this video we will be finally completely completely finishing up this space, so stay tuned until the end of this video to see the completed coffee bar. We love how it turned out and you don't want to miss the before and afters at the end of today's video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to get done in this video is to unbox and set up the refrigerator. This refrigerator is from New Air, and this is a beverage fridge, so I think it's a 126 can freestanding beverage fridge, and it has like a stainless steel front. The shelves are adjustable. I'll show you a little closer look at this fridge at the end of the video when we stock it with some drinks and maple syrup, milk, all the things we'll need for coffee. This is kind of a narrow space to work with, so it was a little bit hard to find a fridge that would fit perfectly in this space I think I only had about two options to pick from but thankfully I was able to find one that would fit here this fridge is 18 and a half inches deep and then it's almost 19 inches wide and then both of our cabinets are 12 inches wide so we had about almost a one inch gap on either side of those 12 inch cabinets so here you can see Jalen is just trimming out that space and he's also attaching these cabinets to the studs in the back wall Okay, so before we start working on the countertop, I'm unboxing some items I ordered from Timu for the coffee bar. And a big thank you to Timu for sponsoring this video. We first heard about Timu from my husband's family. They've been ordering items from there for the past year, and they were able to find so many neat things for such a low price, so we decided to try it out. And in my previous organization video, you saw me adding a few organization items from Timu to our house. This Lego organization container and the wooden organizer for plastic wrap foil that comes with labels and was just such a great addition to the kitchen. I also ordered quite a few items for this coffee bar and I got all these items for such a great price. I want to do a quick haul here to show you each item and then at the end of the video you'll see each item in the completed coffee bar space. The first item that I got is a coffee grounds knock box. I've been wanting to get one of these for a while. I love this glass like storage jar with the round lid. I'll probably put some coffee beans in here and put it up on the shelf. And then I got a variety of different cups. They have so many beautiful cups for such a low price on Timu. I love these cute coffee mugs that I found. And also these glass cups will be perfect for iced coffees. And I got this little mat to put under the espresso machine. And then also this set of syrup pumps. They fit perfectly on top of my glass syrup bottles that I have. And then I loved this little glass espresso cup with 
with the wooden handle. This is going to be perfect for when I'm making iced coffees. It'll be really easy to pour those espresso shots into the cup. I got these little wooden accessories that I'll use for when I'm grinding up my beans and getting ready to make my espresso shots. Some cute little gold spoons. I'm gonna put these probably in a cup there by the coffee machine so that I can use them to stir our hot coffee and our iced coffees and everything. If you want to shop any of these items from Timu, I will have the links down below. They've got so many amazing savings on their website up to 90% off, such great prices. They have free shipping and free returns. And with my coupon code JOY2785, you can get a $100 coupon bundle. The link for Timu will be down below in the description box and you can also download the Timu app through my link as well. Okay, so we headed out to the shop to start working on this countertop. We ended up deciding to do a butcher block countertop. And like I shared in the last video, we were able to find a cheaper alternative to butcher block countertop. And we ended up saving $100 by getting this, it's called like a farmhouse project panel from Lowe's instead. This was $115 for this six foot piece. And for a six foot piece of butcher block countertop, it's like $220, so I was really excited to find this alternative, and I will have it linked down below if you're looking for something like this. We did struggle a little bit to get this to fit perfectly just because he had to notch it on either side for the little walls. He had to take it back out to the shop about four or five times. Just each time we brought it in, we would have to sand off just a little bit more on the one side to get it to fit down in but finally got it to fit perfectly and now I'm starting the staining process. So the first step is to do a pre-stain wood conditioner. I always like to use this pre-stain wood conditioner before staining any wood project. So I applied that pre-stain conditioner with a brush and then you have to let it completely dry before staining. let that stain dry overnight and now the next morning I'm using our favorite top coat which is also from Minwax. This is a water-based top coat. It's polycrylic and it's also in a flat finish. I usually like to always use either a flat or a matte finish on wood projects. Now it's time to start painting the cabinets and we did just end up deciding to paint them white. It was a safe choice. If I ever really want them to be a darker color, we can do that later on, but the white did start to grow on me once the space was completely finished. You can let me know what you think down below. This is the same white paint that we used on our kitchen cabinets and the first step was to remove the cabinet doors and the drawer fronts. We took those outside and set them up on these little orange cone looking things. And you can buy these in packs on Amazon or at places like Lowe's, Home Depot. They are a must when you're painting drawer fronts and cabinet doors, anything like that that you want to sit up off the ground. These are just perfect. So Jalen sprayed the doors and the drawer fronts and then I used a brush and a roller to paint the outside of the cabinets. We didn't bother painting the inside. That's the same thing that we did in the kitchen. Just paint the outside of the cabinets leave the inside the wood color and then the final step for the cabinet area Jalen added the trim all the finishing touches around the edges and the caulking and everything Okay, so the next step is to get that countertop installed now that it was completely dry and then he's going to be hanging up the doors, putting the drawers back in place and everything. And then the next day we will install handles and build the shelves, decorate and get this space completely finished.
Okay, so it's the next morning and the plan for this morning was to build two wooden floating shelves above the countertop. So the first step was to, of course, get all of the measurements and then we headed out to the shop and cut up this plywood. You will need two pieces of plywood, one for the top of your shelf and then one for the bottom of the shelf. And you're going to use pieces of two by fours for your shelf support. As you can see here, he's attaching those to the walls where the shelves are going to go. And this is what will be attaching the shelves to. So he originally thought that he was going to have to drill into the tile to attach these supports for the shelf, but he actually only had to drill into the actual wall on either side into the studs. And these were plenty secure enough without having to drill into the tile, which was awesome. Now the next step after the pieces of plywood were sanded, it was time for stain. So I did the three steps, pre-stained wood conditioner, Second step after that dried was the stain and the same stain that we used on the countertop, that special walnut by Minwax. Once that was dry, the final step was that top coat. And once those plywood pieces were dry, he attached them to the top and the bottom of that two by four support. And then the front of these shelves is going to be the smaller board, which he cut, sanded, and then I stained as well. The coffee bar area is now complete and it's time to get everything set up. The espresso machine, the ice maker, this ice maker, I'll have the link for it down below and I do also have a coupon code. You can get 40% off with that coupon code. It's been really fun to have nugget ice just right here on the countertop. You can manually fill it with water. You don't have to have it hooked up to a water line. And we want this to be a drink station, not only a coffee bar. So we'll be adding drinks to the fridge. And then also I'm putting tea bags in one of the drawers so you can make your hot tea here as well. And this was just really fun to finally get all of this set up and get the shelves decorated. Stay tuned here in a minute. You're going to get to see the finished space and the before and afters. takes me a little while to style shelves because I'll put something up there, stand back and look at it for a little while, move it around, take it down, put up something else. It's just kind of a process until it looks the way that you were picturing it in your head. After I had the shelves decorated, then I cleaned up the espresso machine and also started to stock the fridge. One more thing I want to add to this area is a larger mat to go underneath of the espresso machine. This one is just a little bit too small and it would be really nice to have a larger mat for when coffee and coffee grounds spill and to just have a little more protection on the countertop around the machine. Thank you. 
Okay, so now it's time for the before and the afters and also all the final shots of the completed finished coffee bar space. that you enjoyed this little three-part series of our latest house project as we worked on this little mini kitchen makeover here at the corner of our kitchen turning this space into a coffee bar area thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you next week with a new video bye